Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the North 40. I'm Rick. And I'm Brittany. And today we're gonna show you seven tips to optimize raising your chickens. Number one, the placement of your coop and pen. Where should you put it? Things you wanna consider is you want areas that are well lit, if you can help it. Chickens like light, that's gonna help your egg production. You're gonna need a generally flat spot so that you can put a pen, if you like a pen like we do, for additional space and roaming area for them. You're gonna to wanna to have an area that you can cover for weather protection from snow, rain, sleet, etc. Yes. Direct sunlight in the summer if you're in a real hot climate. And then you want something fairly close to your water source and your items that you have to store, like chicken feed, like your hay, and like your cleaning items to do maintenance on your coop. Another consideration for coop placement is electricity. Are you going to be running electricity to your coop? Are you going to be running any kind of light source or heat lamp? We have an automatic chicken door, so we need electricity for that. Mm -hmm. And then also in the winter, we use electricity and extension cord to heat our water so it doesn't freeze over, so our girls always have fresh water. You do not want 300 feet of extension cord, so your coop <laughs> placement matters to your nearest outlet. As you can see here, we've got our electrical cord running into our coop from the underbelly and all of our cords that run along our house over to our outlet underneath our uh, our covered deck so that is running the uh, the warming unit for the water the heat lamp and the electric door we are not too far from our house as you can see here we're only about probably 12 feet from the side of our basement exterior wall. One of the things you don't want to do, especially if you live in a hot weather climate, is put your coop too close to your house. Your entrance, yeah. your exits, Ugh. flies and stink. It's gonna smell. Really so bad. even ours in the summer is gonna stink. But one of the things we do in the summer, unlike the winter, is we free range them. Their pen is open, so they're peeing and pooping outside in the woods, not just exclusively in the pen, where it causes that acrid buildup of urine smell. So that helps. Exactly. All right, tip number two is convenience. And this is primarily convenience for you. So we come out our back door, so you might want to be close to your chicken coop. Whatever's easiest for you to be able to get your eggs, feed and water your girls, and then also clean out your coop regularly. So you need to have it a convenient location for all your supplies, your feed, and then your tools. Another thing which is nice that we love is that it's convenient for us to be able to look at our girls. We can just look at down through our basement windows and it's so fun just to watch them when they're actually in their pen in their coop. We can literally look through our basement window and look inside the windows of their yeah. coop at night and see them roosting in there so we know they're good to go. That might not be your scenario, but it works good for us. And the fact that when we come out our slider door here in our basement to come and check the coop, maybe there's an issue at night. We've heard sounds out here before. We have a floodlight that operates off a motion sensor. So if we come out, it lights up the whole area. And if there's any critters walking around down here to include our dogs, our lights light up. Yeah, so we can see what's going on down here. Another part of tip two, like we talked about convenience, as mentioned here, we've got all of our chicken coop materials containerized and fairly close to the coop. These are dry undercover. As you can see, they're on our lower patio that has been dried in. So this is just our pine shavings. We have flake and we have um, fine shavings in here. And this just keeps them dry. And you can actually just carry this over to the coop like we do when we clean it out. Brittany will just haul this over, rake everything out, and put new shavings in. The shavings really help to absorb the urine and the stink along with that, that hay or that straw. This one here is for our straw. Okay, a little latch box. And you see we just got a ton of straw in there. This is just for the resupply. Having these boxes just outside under our patio close by just makes it very convenient. And this stuff stays nice and dry and insect free, sealed in these boxes. And these are out of the way of our door, so no worries. In addition, we have our two rakes that we use primarily. We've got the big rake that will get the majority of the stuff out. And then we've got this small one that we can really scrape the stuck on dried poop and the, law, the edges where the two by four framing is on the bottom plate by the floor. We can really scrape that with this rake. And we just scrape all our stuff into the woods out where we live because it's not a problem. All right, tip number three, prop your coop up off the ground. Ours came that way as part of the kit. Your coop needs to be two to three feet off of the ground, and there's two reasons for this. Number one, predators. You don't want them burrowing inside your pen if it's ground level. 
So point number two, having it elevated so that it's off the ground so you don't have a lot of moisture and wet conditions for your chickens, like our climate, snow, ice, rain, mud, if your stuff is sitting on the ground, they're just wallowing in that, going in and out of their pen or their coop. So having your coop elevated two to three feet is gonna require a ladder step um, for your chickens to get in and out. Our coop came with one, it was very narrow and rickety, so I built this one out of pressure, treated with a little bit bigger steps. You get a lot of buildup of poop and mud on the coop side. So you wanna make sure they have plenty of good traction coming out of here. We actually had one of our girls fell out with a rickety one and hurt her hip. A good little step like this is important. Tip number four, illuminate the inside of your coop. We use a heat lamp in the winter to provide both light and warmth. This way our girls lay throughout the entire winter and give us eggs. Let's see, boy, one, two, 11. Oh, we didn't get a full dozen. At 11. What's going on out here? Hey, girls. Your lamp needs to have a warm glow. The bluish white light does not help them. <laughs> she doesn't like me in here. Along with the heat lamp or just warm light in general, we have our heat lamp on a timer. And right now it's set to be on 24 7 because it's winter. But we will adjust it to go on only at nighttime. So like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So that's a little white timer we just bought aftermarket. We also bought an electrical kit aftermarket that we added on to our coop. So that is something that you can do to optimize your chicken raising experience. Quick discussion on the heat lamps now that Brittany's shown you on the inside. We have found there are two different kinds of heat lamps. We prefer the red style. It provides warmth and muted light. As Brittany stated, the whiter lights, the brighter white, they don't like those as much. This is also a heat lamp that is, it's white. So it doesn't have the reddish filter on it. It is super bright. We used to come down here at night, look down the basement window through here, and it would be like light just, you know, glaring out of the coop. Just to show you the box, this is what it looks like. The 250 watt white light heat lamp. Don't use that type. I bought some of these because I was trying to go to Home Depot and Lowe's locally when I was out of the red ones. I couldn't get them. They were just out for a while. So I picked up the white ones, don't like them. This is the type I would use. On that vein, it is kind of a discussion in the chicken raising community of whether you should just let your chickens acclimate and go to your natural climate and sunlight, daylight hours, okay? Some people say, do not give them artificial light. And a lot of our friends and neighbors are doing that. I will say this, I'm not the complete expert, but I will tell you, we have had eggs all winter. And the one common denominator from all of our friends and neighbors in the local area that haven't got eggs this winter, they didn't have a heat lamp. So we have had constant yield of eggs all winter. And that's why we have chickens is for the eggs. So we want the most yield possible. We think it's our heat lamp in the warmth that we give them with the additional light where our friends and neighbors don't. So to optimize your chicken raising experience, especially if you're like us and you're doing it for the egg production, I would do a heat lamp and make sure you got that quality fixture inside to run one so it's not a fire hazard. I brought down some treats for the girls. It's some banana and kiwi, which they say is safe for chickens. I will link in the description box below the website I use to know if what's safe for your chickens to eat or not as scraps, etc. Yeah. They're like, what is this stuff? Look at how they wipe, oh, their, they're wiping their, they wipe beaks. their beaks off sideways. <laughs> so cute. Tip number five is you need some nesting boxes and roosting perches. Nesting boxes are for where your chickens primarily... Man, the girls are vocal today. Nesting boxes are primarily where your chickens are going to lay their eggs. Our coop has five that came with our coop. Honestly, our chickens don't like laying eggs in their nesting boxes. So we got a tip on our last chicken video from um, one of our subscribers to put dummy eggs in the nesting boxes and that should get them to lay in, lay their eggs in these nesting boxes. So after we clean the coop out, I'm gonna put these dummy Easter eggs that I have in these nesting boxes with a lot of straw and pine shavings. And let's see if it makes a difference for them. So if you build your own coop, make sure you have 
roosting bars and you can just do any kind of log or wood across your coop and they love perching on this and they actually sleep on it at night time. Any kind of horizontal board will do. To make a great environment for the girls, we use straw and pine shavings um, in a layering effect. Make sure you don't use cedar shavings, it's not good for the girls' respiratory system. Do you want to just let them out? Sure. Okay, come on girls. Come on. The girls are just taking a great dirt bath. They're all huddled together, flopping around, cleaning their feathers and everything with the dirt. It's the first time they've really been out all winter and been able to see bare ground. So they're excited. All right, number six is predator-proof hardware. You know there's a lot of little predators out there like raccoons that can actually open latches. So what we have is latches that you have to twist to be able to open and they even lock. So most predators are not gonna be able to use this. I don't think any predators really can. This is on our big door to enter the coop and then also on the nesting boxes. And then something else we have is an automatic door so that shuts every night so the predators can't get in. The automatic door either operates on a timer or a daylight sensor. Right now we're using the daylight sensor for our automatic door. To our pin door we have a door handle that you have to squeeze together, which predators can't do. And then we also have our roof covered with tarps and the roof of our pin is actually just continuation of the metal wiring on top. So eagles and hawks can't dive in and grab our chickens or even raccoons from the trees can't hop over and jump over the top of the chicken coop. So that's something to consider is covering the top of your chicken coop as well. Under that tip six, which is making sure your stuff is predator proof, your coop, your pen. Also, you wanna make sure your feed is predator proof. What I recommend or we recommend is just a good old fashioned metal trash can that has the sealable lockable top lid. Mice can't even get in this, so. We just put our feed in this and we don't have critter problems. So we use a local feed that's, that we trust, that's really high quality. See it says non-GMO, corn and soy free. So if you can find a local distributor or producer that does chicken feed that's organic, non-GMO in your area, I highly recommend it. This is a 40 pound bag and it just fits perfect. Right in that can. Boom, and it seals, so watertight, critter-proof. And we got this at our local hardware store. All right, tip number seven and our final tip is ventilation. For chickens to keep them healthy and to not get sick, you need to have good ventilation. One of the things I really like about our coop that we bought here, it has two real windows that have two different lockable positions in open, and they have real screens. So you can, in the summer, these are always open for the girls. Keeps the flies out and allows some good airflow. In addition, this coop has two vents up high. We're gonna show you those. We all know heat rises, so these are up towards the top. I don't know if stink rises. This may evacuate some of that too. But there's two of these vents on both sides. The other one's kind of precluded by our pen and our tarp. But these are a nice little ventilation duct right there and then you see the other one back over behind our timer so yeah see we got some good ventilation in here and then if you really need to air it out you can open the man door and, and the chicken door all right now we're going to show you a convenience hack that one of you our subscribers sent us in the comments section kind of cool um, don't know why i didn't think about this before this coop is advertised as having a treated sprayed material on top of the inner plywood to help to you know preserve the wood from the urine, the acids and stuff like that, the fecal matter. So it has been treated, but this hack is really cool. It's taking a heavy, thick plastic and putting it on your back wall so that that poop and pee that hits that back wall won't stick and degrade or rot your wood. So we're gonna install some of that today. I'm just gonna get this 
debris off these bottom plates, two by fours, so I can get that plastic nice and flush to the bottom where it's gonna collect all the pee and urine. Make sure you have a mask on and glasses when you do this. You don't wanna breathe in this chicken poop. So we're just cleaning off as much on this back plywood wall that's accumulated the dry stuff before we put our plastic on. We're gonna get a lot of that, at least it's nice and dry. The subscriber that gave us this comment, they used magnets to mount their plastic so they could swap the plastic easily. What an ingenious idea. Gotta be pretty heavy duty magnets to go through this siding T111 uh, from inside and outside. You can buy them at your local hardware store, I'm sure. We don't have any magnets on hand, so I'm just gonna use some basic staples. Yes, those can rip when you take the plastic off. They can rip through the plastic. You just pry them out with a, a screwdriver, a flathead, or a, a pocket knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and just staple mine up. This is compressed straw. Not only is it what they like to nest in, but they also it also keeps them warm, barrier from the cold ground, and then also, they just like to peck in it. Another tip not included is make sure you get some mucking boots. Pins are disgusting. And you just create a nice thick layer. So I'm putting these pine shavings towards the back where they pee and poop so it helps absorb it. And there's that back wall now with the plastic on there to really prevent the rotting and degradation of that back wall. Babe, come look at them all, they're all in one hole. I know. They're I saw... all like in this dirt hole cuddling. <laughs> the girls just laid this egg so I am going to put it in this nesting box with hopes that they'll lay another one there. And then I'm gonna put dummy eggs in the other boxes. We'll see if this trick works. So how do you feel in there, Brittany? <laughs> Whoa, hello. <laughs> Good. I think, we're, I think we're done. I think we can go get cleaned up. Yeah. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us in Life in the North 40. If you like our content and this is your bag, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And check out this video right here if you want to find more about our chicken coop and pen setup. See you next time.